have a solar or battery system or you're thinking of getting one, this video is for you. This is going to tell you how to automate your entire battery and solar system to be more intelligent and get you the cheapest price per kilowatt hour known to man. It's going to drive down your costs and make sure that your payback for that solar investment or your battery investment is even better. Now, more importantly, for my UK viewers, if you're on Octopus Go Intelligent, which can allocate additional hours outside your normal fixed hours, you've got this risk that your battery that you fully charge from your solar or even overnight electricity could drain into your electric car giving you an empty battery, but when you're having cheap electricity. This video will tell you how to completely automate the way that works. In other words, you could have it pause when your car's charging, or even go, car's charging, electricity must be cheap, I'm gonna now fill the battery at cheap rate electricity. Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you may have seen me talk about technologies and basically extras that you can buy to work with a system called Home Assistant. Now, I'm not gonna really tell you how to set up Home Assistant, make Home Assistant. This video is not about that. This video is about how to make Home Assistant and your batteries and your solar system play nice. But very quick summary about Home Assistant. It's an open piece of software, it's free, but you can buy hardware, you can put it on an old computer, an old laptop, or you can buy dedicated Raspberry Pis or dedicated Home Assistant computers that will run this piece of software in your house. Just basically think of it as the smartest smart hub in your house. It will control everything in your house that has the word smart in it. So if you've got smart bulbs, a smart thermostat, uh, you've got smart EV charger, you've got a smart battery, you've got a connect, internet connected solar system. If you've got anything that's internet connected, chances are someone makes a home assistant app version for it so you can control everything from one app and controlling everything from one app means that everything can talk to each other within that ecosystem without you having to pay for if this then that or other integrations it means that you can even make some software that wasn't designed to talk to other software like ev chargers and solar batteries talk nice to each other and be play really nice. Now, although this video will be specifically talking about Octopus Go Intelligent, this video actually applies to any internet connected EV charger where you want the charger to tell other technology in the house that it's charging. So you might want the EV charger to tell your batteries to stop charging. In this example, in this video though, we're going to actually want to charge the batteries because when Octopus are charging the car, you're gonna get 7.5p electricity at the time recording this video, meaning that you can charge your batteries really cheap, keep them full, but also mean that that battery's not being discharged into your EV. Now, Octopus Go Intelligent is at the moment one of the cheapest energy deals I can find for EV drivers in the UK. If you wanna sign up, go to evnick.com forward slash energy. If you go there, sign up, there is a code to split a hundred pound with me when you sign up. Now, Home Assistant might seem very complicated at first, but Trust me, it's not that complicated. It's basically, think of it as a mobile phone where you can download apps and those apps can all talk to each other on your mobile phone. So what you need to do is there's plenty of guides on the internet if you can't find certain apps and you're wondering how to install certain apps, there is loads of YouTube tutorials. Just follow them. You don't need to be a computer whiz kid. Just follow the videos. And if you follow the videos, you'll get it. But first one you want to download is one called Hackass, which is the Home Assistant Community Store. So some of them will already, some of the things will already come pre-built. These are just basically apps that the community have built to work. And one of the apps on the Home Community Store is an app called Octopus. API. You download that, use the API key in your Octopus account. Again, there's guide talking people how to do this. It's very, very simple. Just follow them step by step. You get your Octopus code, API code out of your dashboard. You put it into the Octopus Home Assistant app, and then that can read your Octopus data. It can see everything that Octopus can see, everything that you see in your app can be seen, and it basically talks intelligently. Now, this is very important for certain chargers because certain chargers will tell the Octopus API that they're charging, hour slots have been put in. If you have an OMI charger, it works slightly different, and we'll get to that in a minute. But let's first talk around which apps you now need to download once you've got the Octopus part, because you next need to find the app for your certain brand inverter. So if you've got Solax inverter, you've got um, uh, an alpha battery like mine, you need to go and find the following apps for that. Now they may be on the official store for Home Assistant or they may be on that Hacker store, the Home 
uh, community store. So have a quick look, see which one it is, download those apps, follow the guys if you're wondering and you get struggling how to how to get that inverter app set up because some of them are more complex than others, some of them are dead easy, like enter your username, enter your password. And then once you've got those two things, we've got the basis of them talking to each other. Now, if you're my energy customer or Warbox customer, you don't need to download their apps, but they do have official apps if you want to download them as well and make them work into Home Assistant, but you don't need them for the following. You just need the inverter uh, API, the Octopus API, and that's it. Once you've got that, you can make the following tools. So skip further onto the video. There's a timeline down below and then you can make the rest of it work. But you can download their apps as well. If you have an Omi charger or you're on another brand of charger because you're on an Ovo tariff, then keep following down the video. We'll try and talk you through what you need to do next. Now, really important, if you've done this for your brand of inverter or charger, I'm going to put a pinned comment with instructions. So basically in those instructions, if you've got one, just write down what inverter you've got and how you do it because my example here is going to be for the alpha ess battery and my omi charger so if you have a different setup to me and you've made it work then just write a little geek detailed guide under that pin comment and i'll make sure that everyone can see it and i might even write a blog for it on evnick.com so everyone can sort of see how to automate this now what you're going to have to do now is go into your inverters app on home assistant and find out how that inverter app can be set to change the hours of when you're uh, inverter charges and discharges there'll be guides and documentation on basically commands that you need to automate that to basically say charge or stop charging and this is the most important part and the most complicated part you need to read if there is detailed guides below for someone who's got a different setup to me then go and have a look at that and like i said i will try and get them on evnick.com try and help everyone out so there's a long-term resource there for people like you trying to get into stuff that like this this is a little bit more complex than what you're normally used to now you're basically going to go into settings and automentations and set up two different automations you're going to set up one that basically looks at the time and make sure that it's past the half five time and before the half 11 time and it's if it sees the api trigger that it's charging or in my case the omi charger that it's charging it will know that there's extra hours allocated and therefore will then do the second command which is set the inverter to charge and then i also have a second uh, automation which is called set things to normal the idea of this is if for it, there is no extra hours, the system will reset the system back to my normal charging hours. I advise that you do that. I've also got some little parameters like that. Make sure the time is before this and after this. This just allows a little bit of error correction if there's any problems and just stops the automations fighting each other in the background. Now, without any input from me, this system will just run 24 seven, seven days a week and just look at if my Omi charger is charging. And if it is, it will set the car to charging. And then when it stops charging, it will set the hours back to normal. There's no input from me needed. I've left it alone and it's working absolutely perfect. There's also other things you can do with this automation. If you're in other parts of the world, you can set it to look at the solar prediction in your home assistant. Solar, solar predictions can be set in home assistant automatically. And you can see that if you're not gonna fill your battery, charge 20% off the grid at night and play around with it. There's a lot of things you can do with home assistant. I, fully advise you get it now if you haven't got a solar system you haven't got inverters yet then you might want to check that the solar inverter system that you're getting or even an ev charger is capable of doing octopus intelligent capable of being set manually by home automations like this because it's really important now i've got a review here of six months of what my solar system has been like so far so if you've not got a solar system i reckon you should check this video out first